All right. Welcome to our home. How did it feel welcoming your friends over to your new dream home on Oahu? A place you're proud to invite them to, happy to come home to, and still in your budget. These are my friends who are also my clients, and this is their journey, including their successful end, and a blueprint for you to find your way to paradise. To get there, let's rewind to the beginning. The idea. I want to call Hawaii home. But it's not like Inception where I'm forcing an idea in or trying to sell you on anything. It's you, typically starting one of two ways. Now the first way is starting here on island, growing up and leaving to build a career. You grind for years and one day you realize that the grind towards your goals isn't as important as you thought. That all you want is to come back home. You'd give up almost anything for it to happen, or maybe that was a goal all along. This hits me deep because that's my journey, the same for this buyer and what a lot of you are feeling. For him, that idea started 15 years ago after studying at the University of Hawaii and leaving to pursue his education. It led him all around the world, most recently to Japan where he met his eventual wife. But he always had hopes to come back. He spent all that time preparing to make it a reality. Does that sound familiar to you? Now that idea really flourished after we met. I was referred to him by another client. They were college buddies at UH. We got dinner at this amazing local sushi restaurant for the introduction. We reminisced about the glory days in college, living here. Honestly, I don't even remember talking about real estate. The feeling I got was, let's be friends, you're a great guy, and if I can help you in real estate, then awesome. If not, then no problem. The feeling was mutual as he sent me this. Thank you both for a wonderful evening, food, company, education. It was an ideal introduction to what we know can be a long and challenging process. Very much looking forward to learning more and happy that a friend could introduce us to someone so well positioned to educate us on the whole process. Now we spent almost a year going back and forth with Zoom calls and email exchanges until they finally made their way back to Hawaii. Those conversations and questions are all the same that you probably have. One, how's the market? Two, should I buy now or later? Three, where should I buy and what should I buy? How much does it cost? Is it worth it? If you're enjoying this content, please smash the like button. It really helps me and allows others to educate themselves on the journey. Now, he finally made his way to Oahu where he was living in temporary housing. The biggest problem is a short timeline as it's either rent for a year or buy immediately. Their timeline of only 60 days to be in their new home is similar to many military members at PCS to Oahu. But success means expediting a six to nine month process into two. Not impossible, but certainly focused and stressful for everyone involved. Since that time was short, we scheduled 12 showings in a day. A grueling showing session, but necessary since it typically takes 10 showings minimum to put in an offer. You need to understand the market you're buying in and compare price to value to trade-offs to neighborhoods to your budget, which is very difficult by just looking online versus looking at properties in person and discussing it together. Now I play tour guide with them, driving them around and helping them understand context in between all the showings. Now we started Kalihi making our way east for efficiency, with their criteria being two bedrooms, if possible, up to 700,000. As an example of how small world Oahu is, this first showing was previously my clients who sold it to the current owner to upgrade, and now they're doing the same thing themselves. The next showing at Honolulu Park Place was a one bedroom, much more premium of a unit and building with a ton more amenities as you can see here. It's one of the only buildings with a bowling alley as one of the many amenities and a big selling point of living here. We did six showings next in Makiki where the majority of condos in their search are. It's where most first time home buyers purchase due to the most selection in this 400 to 600,000 price range. We went next to Marco Polo, across from Waikiki and home of the infamous building fire of 2007. While a number of buyers would never want to buy here due to that history, it's still one of the best combinations of size, price, view, 
maintenance and amenities around. The last condo showing we had was at Regency Park, and very unique to the area as the only condo project in Kaimu Key. It feels much more like a townhome with privacy unlike any condo project in town. The only issue is that it's priced way higher than everything else we saw and mostly original condition. Now what I find in these instances is that most buyers don't like to purchase near their max. And when push comes to shove, always pick renovated over original, even if it's a much better option for future appreciation with potential renovations. And after almost six hours of showing, we finally finished the marathon. And to celebrate, of course, we had to get some poke from my favorite spot, Kamoku Seafood, and their first time. The next day was discussions of ranking the selection and answering which condos would you want to call home. And it kept coming back to this one. From the outside, it didn't look like anything special, but it felt so private, with a cute garden, a large open lobby, and private pool area tucked away from the street noise. That privacy only got better being at the end of the hall with a corner unit and amazing views from either side of the unit. The typical issues with Makiki is that most buildings face each other, so privacy is an issue. As you can tell here, that's not the case. The unit itself was renovated to live versus renovated to sell or make money, and you can tell by all the little things that I didn't even include in this video. Plumbing isn't the sexiest, but it is one of the most important. I've never seen a Jack and Jill shower situation, so this is a first for me. They converted a one and a half bathroom to two separate connected with the extra large shower. It makes the most logical sense, and a number of units that get renovated do the same thing in the building. But to get this unit, we had a few major hurdles. One, they had other offers, so we were competing. Two, it was my client's first offer. With most buyers, it's hard to understand what winning means compared to how much you have to pay compared to the need to not overpay. So we compared units in the building, ones in the area, and built a model of prices and probabilities together. After that, the biggest consideration I gave to them was this. How would you feel if you didn't get the home? If the difference between getting it or not was only $5,000 or just $30 a month, would you adjust your offer? They thought about it and when ready, we wrote up the offer. There's a few additional things I did to help them get it potentially accepted and you'll need to find out when we work together. Needless to say, the agent called back the next day, we were under contract and the rest, as they say, is history. What I've learned about real estate on Oahu is that success isn't just about helping your clients buy or sell real estate. It's that relationship you build, the experiences you make together, and the friendships you create with those that you can trust with the biggest decisions of their life. Because those are the things you can put a price on. And while I have a job to do, it's not what brings meaning to me. That's my brand, and the biggest question for you is which brand or you and which brand you are stress with. If you want to understand brands in the context of a condo, you'll have to check out this video right here. If you do like my brand, my content info is below to get 